second row of the expedition is like crazy spacious. So just to kind of show you for comparison's sakes, like I've got the driver's seat set up for somebody six feet tall. And like, I've got probably like a good six inches of space between my knees versus where the seat would be. Up overhead. Okay, overhead's a little bit tight. I've got probably about two and a half, almost three inches of space there. So not a ton of space, but the seats have a good amount of cushion to them. So if I was gonna be on distance trips, I wouldn't necessarily mind being back here at all. Now, one of the cool things, we do have a little lever along the side we can use in order to fold the seat forwards if we want to, but we can also take that same thing and we can crank the seat back. So if you wanna ride in style a little bit more, you've got the flexibility to do it. With that seat like that, this is, okay, this is crazy. Six inches of space. So if you've got some taller people getting in that uh, the middle row, all you have to make sure you do, just lean the seats back a little bit. Super comfortable all at the same time when you do it. And, oh, there we go, perfect, all right. So very straightforward, and like I said, super comfortable. Now, the second row is, you've got the option either, obviously, for the dual captain's chairs, like what we're seeing here. There also is the option, not for the dual captains, but for the bench instead. So the Expedition can have up to eight seats, just depending on how you have it configured, because your base models are only gonna have five seats, so we won't have a third row whatsoever. But inside of the majority of it, you'll have at least seven seats, option eight, so just depending on how you have the rest of it configured. But having the dual captain's chairs to get into the back row, definitely a nice thing. I remember back when I was growing up, so I come from the family with, from a family with nine kids. I'm the third oldest out of nine, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. But I mean, there is so much space back here, which is great. But even it's funny. So even with the family with nine kids, we still have the two parents and my aunt was living with us at one point. So we had like 11, 12 people living in the house. So whenever we went anywhere, we, we would always have two cars. My dad had an Eddie Bauer Expedition and then it was a Ford Windstar van that we had. So it was kind of crazy. We needed all that space because of all the people. It got kind of crazy at times. But something like this, if you've got a bigger family or if you just know you're gonna be transporting bigger people around, useful, very, very useful. But styling wise, this is really nice. It does, it's very, very similar to what you're gonna find in the first row. So this is the platinum model of the vehicle. So like the highest available possible option. Do you need to go with this option? No, but there is so much stuff that's available when you do. But I love the new highlights for the 2022 models. They've done a really, really good job of the redesign. Now this one does have the option for a 22 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. And the speakers all over the place in the second row. It's amazing, amazing how much stuff is back here. Overhead, we do have our handles there. So driver passenger side, there's a hook there. We've got some cabin lights that we can control in the back. And then we can also adjust what's going on with the individual fans for this second row. Some options in the third we'll get to in just a second. But this is really nice. We've got a nice handle along the side, along the driver's side door. We've got a little storage compartment, a lower storage compartment. There are a few different places we can put some stuff all over the place. We do have a few cup holders behind the armrest of the driver and passenger, so behind that console there. We do also have pockets behind the driver passenger seat in the first row, so we can store tons of things all over the place. We do have a little screen along the back, which gives us tons of options. So we can adjust what's going on with our audio there. We can change it our media on the back here as well. So if we want to change it out, we could. Oh, and we can also seek back here. Oh, that's cool. Well, you know what that means. Audio test from the second row. Half volume, half volume right now. Like that is, it's mind blowing how good the audio is in this thing. I absolutely love it but we can change between am fm sirius xm all of our different media there we can also see what's going on with our clock we can seek like i said from the back here we've got a few different power points so usb usb c along the left side then there's 150 watts or a traditional wall outlet along the right hand side down from there a series of options for our cabin controls for our oh for the vent Ah, oh, that's amazing. I talk, <laughs> when I was playing around in the first row, I actually locked out the second row vent, so I can't actually adjust anything back here. But if I didn't disable the vent in the back, you'd be able to control the fan speed. You'd also be able to control the temperature. We can turn it on or off, have it go to our face or our feet. And then there are heated outboard seats. So you're never gonna have third row heated seats whatsoever. You've got different options that are available depending on how the rest of your ride's configured for the second row. But if you do have heated seats, it's only gonna be on the outboard seat. So middle seat is never going to be heated whatsoever. 
but it is nice all at the same time. Now down from there, we do have a 12, ooh, 12 volt power point, and then there's a little storage area there. So not a ton of storage space, but still quite a bit. Now one nice thing, so I did mention the seats can actually fold forwards backwards, but we can also slide the seat forwards backwards. So if you've got some pretty tall people and someone's got a, if someone's drawn the short straw, they've got to get into the third row, just knowing they'll be able to comfortably do it. So it is nice how much space is back here, but I want to show you something because we can easily fold down this third row if we want to. There's a little lever I was showing you in order to fold the, recline the seat. We can pull that in order to fold the seat flat down very, very simply. But there's also another option where we can, if the seat's up, we can also slide this seat. So there's a little lever right along the very top. We're just gonna pull, tilt, and slide. So if you've got the option for the bench, you have obviously got a few different ways that you can get into that third row instead. But at the same time, if you don't need the bench seat, having the options with the dual captain's chairs makes getting into the third row extremely easy. So very, very straightforward to do it. Now, obviously if the seat was forward and I needed to get out through the door there, it's not impossible to do at the same time. It's pretty straightforward to do. But even in the third row, so these seats are locked into place. So I don't have the option of moving them forwards, backwards, but they can recline. So because we're a 60-40 split in the back here, hold on, I got to do something. There we go. Just so you can see this a little bit easier. But we're a 60-40 split for the bench in the back. And we can adjust as necessary. So forwards, backwards, there's a button on the outside of that left versus right side. So we can adjust each part of this, the bench individually in the third row. I'm six feet tall. So I had no, no issue getting into that third, second row whatsoever. Inside of the third row, oh, that's a seatbelt. I was like, is my head touching? That's actually crazy. Okay. I've got about two, maybe two and a half inches of head space there. So if you're taller, you'll probably be able to fit back into this third row because, so I've got this middle seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall. So passenger seat, first row, six feet. This row, six feet. Third row, six feet. And like, I still have space back here. Like I've still got that same, like two, maybe two and a half inches of head space there. I've got a few inches. Again, same thing. I've got about three, four inches of space as well for my knees. Good amount of foot space. So if I drew the short straw, had to get into the third row of the expedition, I would not mind being back here whatsoever. We've got some nice things. We've got some cup holders for the third row, which is great. Some storage, we've got speakers in the back as well. Like I said, we can recline and we've got some power points. So there's a USB power point on the driver passenger side. And then there's also a 12 volt plug on the very back. You probably wouldn't be able to comfortably reach. Eh, I can just reach it. So there is another 12 volt power point in the cargo area specifically. But this is great. There is a boatload of space back here. Feature wise is good. We've got the option of controlling our vents along the third row. We've got a hook. Ooh, we've got hooks on both sides as well. So if we need to hang some things up, we can. We've also got controls for our cabin lights in this third row. That's so neat but a little bit more than I was expecting back here, which is great. And then one of the cool things is that if you ever need somebody in this jump seat, we also have our hidden seat belt along the very top. Up she goes. But overall, I think Ford did a phenomenal job inside of the 22 Expedition. But one thing to point out, it's great for full-size adults, but one of the cool things, Oh yeah, it is the case for the third row as well. Second and third row, we have our anchors and tether points all over the place. So if you've got front facing, rear facing child seats, you're not gonna have an issue getting them into either the second or the third row, which is definitely a nice thing.